Washington. <laughs> so how you been? You were doing some scrims, you said? Yeah, a little bit, but I lost all of the games, so... Just... Oh, no. You didn't feel like playing ladder anymore? <laughs> well, I play a lot of ladders today, just to try to find some more ideas. Try to do what? Uh, I got, tried to, to find some more ideas. Oh, I got yeah. really annoyed. I got really annoyed at losing a lot of games in Scream. So the initial plan that I have is not really working. <laughs> do you, um, is, is that your process? Like, do you have an idea you just test it on the ladder? Or what, what do you usually do? Uh, the process is like to... Well, it, it depends on the meta. Sometimes there is like a very popular deck that mm -hmm. I know everyone's going to play. And then. Oops, I closed the score by accident. Sorry, um... Puzzle. I accidentally closed the score. Um... Oh. Sam, can you yeah. make note of the top three and add add them points later? Tigress, Nascula, and Georges. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, I assume you don't want me to put you on camera or anything, right? Uh, it's fine. I, I, I'm looking at Twitch now. So it's a bit delayed. It's fine. Yeah. Um. I mean, I can share my screen. I, I meant, I didn't know if you wanted to be on on the stream. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, you said so. You mm -hmm. usually just try stuff out on the ladder and, and see what works. Um. Yeah. Well, that's the process of finding decks, but, but like. You think about what what's most... meta, and you try to you, you try to think of given that this is meta, this is popular. What deck will be good on the yeah. ladder because. I'm going to run into a lot of that. And if I can farm that matchup, then it'll be easy to get a good score. Yeah. And, and nowadays, I start to think about coins as well. Just like you want like a bit of balance in your lineup just to have ideally two, two good blue coins, two good red coins with one or two decks that is like good at both. I see. So... um. Any SY deck? Um, no, unfortunately, I I play some. I play some bounty necker last season. It's all right. Yeah. But um, it lose to the good deck now. Like on, uh, I feel like right now it's really hard to beat Frost and um. And pirates. It's weird. With with bounty. Well, yeah, yeah, with bounty for sure, <clears throat> it's difficult, especially on the ladder because bounty on red, uh, on blue is just <clears throat> better against those two decks. So you just get abused so much. That makes sense. That's part of why I haven't been enjoying playing bounty like uh, as much, even though like I. I played and I was like, oh yeah, Bounty's really strong right now. But because there's some games where it like doesn't matter, right? You just mm -hmm. it, it, it's like You just queue into Frost and then you lose. It's yeah, you feel annoying. like an idiot. <laughs> I feel like an idiot when I play a matchup, like when I'm playing a deck that can't beat Cultus and I run into Cultus, I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. At least Cultus isn't super common, but it's like, oh, I just, I killed, like, the other day, uh, somebody in chat was like, wait, how did you lose that? You killed the first six cultists that he played in round one, and you still lost round one on even. I was like, yeah, because cause he played Operator, and that gave him a bronze to, to infuse. Like, I, there's nothing I can do about that if I didn't have, like, if I don't have a Purify or a Lock immediately for my own unit. Like, it's so silly. <laughs> yeah, I also don't like, I don't like cultists as well. It's so, just not really. so I think there's like for people who play a lot on ladder, there's value to decks like like I played a lot of NG and Slave last season because while it wasn't the best, it also didn't have that many very bad matchups, right? It was like you always get Calvi, like you always know what you're gonna get. 
Sure, you'll lose yeah. some, you'll win some, but at least you'll feel like you have a chance. Yeah, you get some consistency as well in your plan. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, I, I feel like enslaved is, is weak, but I hate that I have to queue against enslaved when I, when I'm, so the, the thing is to try to beat Frost and, and SK, you sort of either play some very like weird cards with weird effects, like to tank damage and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then that kind of stuff doesn't really work against enslaved. Like an old gear? Is that the type of card you're yes, talking about? That, that, yeah, that sort of stuff. Or or sometimes against Frost and Pirate. Like the, the problem right now is that Frost go very tall and then Pirate doesn't go tall at all. So it's really hard to take on ladder oh, yeah. against those two. And then you you have to find something in the middle, and in the middle you have cards like Shoop and Rude Mage, yeah, and for Skelligan, for example, you you just and then you just like give such a good Artot to some random enslaved, so it's really annoying. When gotcha. the meta is diverse, there's like like I understand the that. It's quite good to have a diverse meta, but at the same time, it's really annoying because um, <laughs> it's fucking annoying, man. Like because it's not like diverse doesn't mean like balance. Yep. It's, yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm just laughing because I've been ranting about this on chat with ch the chat of, like recently. Um, chat, how, how do I feel about diversity in the meta? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> like fucking it like the, the yeah, whole coin flip is pretty is diverse you know like <laughs> a six-sided yeah, dice is it's pretty diverse but that's that doesn't mean it's a good game or fun to play yeah because all the diversity goes into decks that is very i don't know it's 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 cr a lot of greed i feel like in a weird way not in a mm -hmm. gurney way or anything but um Ah, it's hard to explain. It's just like I don't know. It's like different decks have very like focused strategy and and they really cancel each other out. Yes. And I prefer more mid range meta because you know, at least like okay, you slam points, but then you slam points. Uh if 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 all of your matches like slam point, at least you don't lose from the very start. Yeah, like this is something that um, I had trouble explaining to people who would complain about Renfrey, and I was like, yeah. "No, I love I love this season. Like the first season, I think I'm like <laughs> because I queue and I see a deck, and I'm like, that's one of seven decks. Like, and I know all <laughs> seven of them, and there'll be one or two cards <laughs> different. And if there, it is, I can tell by the provisions what they've changed." And I know, like, every game I felt like, oh, I should have done this and this. Or or some games I'd be like, I couldn't have won that because of draws. But if I'd gone this card, I could have, like, it It was one of the most enjoyable seasons for me, even though there was the most complaining about it. Yeah. I feel like uh, when we have diversity, the ladder really needs to show the decks. Like, but, but then, e even then, there's also the problem of, you know, like I was talking about. It doesn't matter yeah. if I see the cultist. I can know his deck card for card. I can't do anything about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like cultists bit this and then this bit that. And then it's just like. It's, it's, but it's why circle. are we playing? Can we just have a bot queue for us? And you tell us how we did based on the time of day and the region we're in? Like. <laughs> yeah. it, well, to. So there are two decks that kind of like beat, can beat everything, which is pirate and monster, and maybe somewhat some kind of Nilfgaard. But I don't. We haven't found that one yet, at least for Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard is like probably the third faction right now. 
Oh third my god, fourth. we don't even know what the third is. We're like trying to. Usually, it's like we don't know the fourth, right? But it's yeah. It's it's it's, it's weird that uh, what Frost is actually so strong. <laughs> like I didn't. Trusky, like last year when we were screaming for his mm. master, he just keep. He he has this very simple mindset to um to eliminate decks that he don't want to bring, which is like it lose to Frost. I wouldn't bring that. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's, that's Trusky line of thoughts from last year, but this year it's a bit. It's like, even more pronounced. No, no, this year somehow Frost is good. For some reason, every is it. So, the the last card drop was the Tirnalia. Since uh -huh. then, has anything changed for Frost, or is it just the meta has changed, or have people just figured meta out that like any other Socrat is the best card in Frost? <laughs> yeah, the meta has changed. Um, Nilfgaard run free get really nerfed, so right, I guess. Because back then Frost just lose to all the armor, but um, yeah, the spotters are spotters used to hold them back, um, and and sergeants and Nilfgaard's a point slam deck, right? Like, yeah, and Frost is like it's kind of a mid rangey like it, it plays few cards. Their cards aren't really copyable because they have weather effects to boost them, and without the weather, like Nilfgaard can't copy the weather effect, right? You can't copy their leader. Mm -hmm. Unless you're playing like Lydia, you can't even copy their specials. Yeah, so oh, yeah, and all, it's just like Frost is like very strong point slam and engine. Same with pirates. They have the same theme in a way. They just their engine just generate value in a different way. Yeah. In a in like in, in complete opposite way, actually. One is like building up damage and armor. Yes. And one is like fucking going very tall yeah like so, if, if you want to target frost you just make sure you can kill the two foglets and have a spore for you know caranthier and that's a lot of their power like almost all their power got but those don't do yeah. anything to pirates um, right yeah <laughs> those will be like useless really yeah i always want against spore against pirates yeah i was having a similar problem with my movement list uh, this season and also last season where I would uh -huh. like you know it, 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 if I run things like I can go the greedy version that can outpoint militarily right in round one mm -hmm. um, and you know also run like lacerates and crushings to because they swarm mm -hmm. and punish yeah. that but then I would lose heart to things like frost or pirates <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and, and and then you know, or I could go like the other way with targeted removal, and and have like you know, uh, locks and 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 the ability to like Milena, so I can move my stuff back. Because Frost can't kill anything that's higher than a four unless they you know, like they can tote something, they can combo Phantom and you know, Wild Hunt Warrior or whatever. They can do some combos, or once they have yeah. Aridin, but. Their damage is predictable. It's not like SK Raid where they can just shit out a 10-point gutting slash, right? So <laughs> yeah. I could run Milena. I could run Tree Ant Boar. I could, as long as I can heal my cards every turn, he can't kill them except for one Imlurus Wrath. But then my, yeah. by making my deck good against that, I'm suddenly bad against NG. Like, and then they just yeah, copy yeah. all my shit and like all my shit. And I'm like, well, I've given him so many good goals. I need to go on interactive. <laughs> you yeah. know? And it's just... It's like a... It feels yeah, so like... I don't... Go ahead. Oh, yeah, so I don't know how to balance this, this type of uh, problem. Uh, you, you know how we got here? Everyone complained about the neutrals. Like, I loved it, the patch, when they, like, buff Roach and Knickers, when they were like, hey, every faction, not just SK and uh, NG, should get good thinning. Um, <laughs> they, they nerf Siege Masters, they nerf Blight Makers, they nerf... Um, you know, like the discard. Do you guys know uh, skirmishers used to be four P? The things that the <laughs> coral discards. Yeah, they they changed us to five P. Like they did all that. I'm like, hey, that's good. Like it it it, it opens up for me. I care the most about like getting to having creative creative freedom to build and play decks and have them be viable. 
And yeah. neutrals allowed that uh, and allowed for interesting yeah. possibilities. Then everybody complained. And in their, I think, this is my theory, in their mad dash to like enshrine faction identity, right? Oh, we got to have the, like Spiro would not shut the fuck up about faction identity. <laughs> I, I just drove me insane. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not a systemic thinker. You have like an, a type of OCD where you want games to be a certain way and the person who did arithmetic best wins or the person who played the, the most boring deck succeeds by their discipline and their ability to come in and play a solid deck. I'm playing the meta deck that Pajabal gave me and so I should be rewarded with wins if I do the arithmetic right. And it, I, I'm, I'm like, that is not how you design a robust sys complex system with 1,500 cards in a way that doesn't get stale. If every game comes down to who clicked their Sigvold best, then it, it will invariably come down to who drew their thing, and then it's just over. There needs to be some spice, some pizzazz, some room for expression. Otherwise, it all becomes like, why don't we just replace everybody with bots and they'll just play perfectly because it becomes tic-tac-toe. <laughs> yeah. Or chess or whatever. Like, I don't know. Most of us, I think, a lot of us enjoy chess, but most of us are like, like the fun parts of Gwent more than... I, I don't. I didn't want. The problem is. See, but when when there's neutral, I feel like it's more like chess than now. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true because like it was like oh Renfri's in, but I'm like yeah, but everybody can play Renfri. So what's your point, yeah. right? Like there's there was nothing inherently. There are a couple of things in Renfri that made it like for example, uh, kindness, right? The one that odd even. Yeah. That one was better for NG because they play multiple cards a turn. OP for for them. What's that? But, Sorry. Like, there was always something too, too over the top. Yes. Every, every, that, every season, that, there were like two or, two or three abilities that you wanted. And they would nerf those, and there would be something yeah. else that you still wanted. Um, I feel like if Ren Free was fixed, like, to now, to, to, to this current state, right away, it would be so much better. Yes. Like, everyone would complain much less. Mm -hmm. Same with, like... Aaron die would be like one month earlier, something like that would prevent a lot of build up stress and frustration from everyone, and then an overreaction from the devs. Will... Yeah, and then people will probably look at things a bit differently, maybe. Speaking of overreaction, uh, ornate sensor <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or Yerdin, like yeah. those cards got deleted. When was the last time any of you saw ornate sensor in a game? I can't tell you, mm -hmm. like. Unless I'm playing it in a meme uh, game. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, what was I going to talk about? I feel like um, back, back then I have this argument that when you have a neutral card, is, is it, wouldn't it be easier to balance it than, like, Faction cards because everyone can access to neutral cards. Granted that different faction will utilize them differently, but if you create neutral and make them very like mid rangey without too many flavors, then I feel like it's a good direction to to give a lot of neutral card to so that everyone can have a lot of tool. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of people well, even, don't like yeah. um, being like the the kind of people that play card games. I think enjoy a bit of routine and uh, predictability, and like it's why there was so much hate for let's say Yerdin or something uh, or Scorch or like because because you kind of feel like you have to play around stuff since you can't see opponents' decks. And then yeah. when you get hit by one, yeah. you're suddenly like, it just creates this like visceral negative reaction, right? Where, oh, this fucking Gyrden clown. God damn it. Like, I can't believe it. <laughs> Mostly you're mad that you didn't play around it. But also then you're like, but I couldn't have known because everybody else doesn't play that card. It, yeah. It, and, and that type of reaction leads to like, yeah. This is the sort of thing that really like frustrate me. Because like even two years ago when I was playing, I would just keep thinking, why the fuck don't we have open decklist? Like 
is it so hard to execute just on pro rank? Yeah. Like so many people just it's like so, so many people, so many pros there. One kid even write a fucking article on Reddit. Did he really? About it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. They, they feel like don't so. One CDPR are institutionally fucking arrogant, like incredibly yeah. arrogant. Yeah. You can tell, and I don't mean the individuals. I just mean like companies have cultures, right? Like they have this yeah. not invented here syndrome, therefore not good. And, and they have to reinvent the wheel. This happens often in companies that are wildly successful from a small stage to a big stage in, in like a shorter amount of time. And they haven't, yeah. then they learned the, long, the wrong lessons. They, they conclude that their success is based on their decisions and their culture, not despite of them, right? So like Facebook yeah. had this ethos of build fast and break things. And it's like, and then they succeeded. But a lot of people argue that the success had nothing to do with that and just they were the right they had the right product market fit at the right time and they did a good way they, they rolled it out well that had nothing to do with build fast and break things it had to do with there being a need for a thing that there's product solving that need and then they they managed to create demand for it by making it exclusive and, and that was a good go-to-market strategy yeah and so when they're bigger Instead of like only keeping that part and discarding the build fast and break things, they would fucking break things. Just one day, all of the bands that I said I had liked became things that I followed. I logged into Facebook and it's filled with shit from like, first of all, everyone can see what I said I like instead of just like the, 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 my friends or whatever. And now I'm subscribed yeah. to all these like brands. I don't want to, what? I, I don't want to use an app that just like, from that moment, I lost all like trust in Facebook. But like, they just kept doing worse and worse things over time because they learned the wrong lesson. They learned that it's okay to just fuck around, not realizing that they're a thing used by a billion people. You're a fucking utility. My phone company doesn't fuck around with the settings, all right? It's, I pick up the phone, yeah. it works. You're the same thing. <laughs> CDPR learned the wrong lessons, which were like, we should build our own engine because that's what they did for like Witcher 1. They succeeded despite their shitty engine. They succeeded, you know, Gwent succeeded despite the shitty... Uh, <laughs> UI and everything else, uh, and and yeah. but but they they've never like or their process like or or their architecture whatever, but I don't know. So it, anyway, if they were less arrogant, they would look at other games and other genres and bring in other people. And be like, how would you do this? And then you just be like, wait, you don't have custom lobbies? What? Like, why is there like, why can't I just set up a friendly and have anybody join? Why isn't there a list of people <laughs> like puzzles saying? Uh, looking for uh, testing and slay five matchup, and then I could go in there and I could select and slay five, and we could look at your thing and we could play. Like, why isn't there a section? Like, why isn't there a matchmaker where this has existed? Like twenty years ago, this existed. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand these kind of like um, what what like what's entry level table stakes <laughs> kind of like basic ass features, right? Yeah. I've been advocating for a draft system only in pro rank because I don't think open deck list is enough. And I also don't know that I like open deck list necessarily. I don't know that it's the most fun. Um, yeah. I think there should be uh, an open deck list mode, like for example, in custom games or in a, sure. you know, but I think there should, instead of having pro rank and not pro rank, there should be draft. And quick match. In quick match, yeah. you queue with whatever deck you want and you get uh, face you face against a random quick other deck. Maybe even at the start, you both can agree to open deck list, and if both people agree, then you see each other's decks. Something as simple as that, right? You should have setting basically. Yeah. Like if, if both players want it to be open deck list, then that's it. You don't want to like have them queue with that because you don't want to split the matchmaker too much, because then you get like worse yeah. matches in terms of MMR. Uh, yeah. especially during like off hours that's a problem a lot of matching run into. but that, that would be quick match and then there would be draft and for draft instead of queuing with one deck I queue with three decks you queue with three decks we get matched I see your three leader icons you see my three leader icons I click one of yours it gets a red X on it you click one of mine it gets a red X on it and then we both see what each other went and we both pick a deck we know what coin we have ta-da 
Yeah. Given that the Gwent probably... World Championship is decided in a series of draft games, I don't understand how pro rank is not. That's like having the qualifiers for soccer allow you to use your hands. What? Or only you, you only <laughs> get to play five players. Like that makes no fucking sense. <laughs> the qualifier for a thing should be the same thing. Like there should be draft. Not just that, but I think a like any argument that I'm, I'm looking for someone to tell me why this would be bad because people say, "Oh, it's complicated." No, pro rank only. It's called pro rank. You've already played enough games to get from rank thirty to rank pro. You should have figured out how to how to queue three decks. You should learn how to. You should know how to play three decks. And if you don't want to, there's quick match. There's literally no no reason to complain. Yeah, or just like refuse to go to pro. It's so easy. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's literally what I'm saying. Like in my proposal, where there's a quick match and a draft, and you can just queue for either one. Um, the quick yeah. match would replace the current casual, but it wouldn't be like new bashing and random ass mill with no consequence. It would be just. <laughs> I just feel like jamming Arakas Queen all day and not, don't want to have it get banned. You know, fine. I get to play and I get some good matchups and bad matchups, but I'm I'm playing one deck. And and for yeah. anything more advanced, there's custom games with settings that you can do. Like anyway, uh, that I think it would be more fun because. A, it teaches people of draft. I think I think deck bans and whatever are so good. I think right now, the, the way the game is, it's either incredibly punishing to some decks on certain coins, um, or it just feels like matchup roulette. So they have yeah. to either decide to not make any decks much better on one coin versus the other, which they clearly can't, right? Mm -hmm. Or people are just going to feel like they wasted 15 minutes of their life. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the time it's like that. I think if there was to be if if they made me King of Gwent and they said, What is your first edict? I'd say draft. Draft in Pro Rank. I think that is the best yeah. thing for East like I, and my second thing would be custom lobbies. Because then I could add an observer, right? Just like StarCraft. I could just make a custom game, invite my friend, or open it to the public. Age of Empires has this. Like <laughs> Quake, you can just set up your own server. Like Every multiplayer game has a way for you to, to like, you can do this in Minecraft. I can have my own. <laughs> <laughs> Little kids have, they have server rules, okay? On this server, you can't destroy anybody else's property. Like, you can't look in other people's chests. It's just. I feel like, uh, you know, I start, I start playing Gwen on mobile, and I feel like they treat this game as a mobile game almost because of the. The, the way they design of the of the layout and all that stuff is very simple. Everything is quite like you just click play and then you just click another play and then you get to a game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh so I feel like they're they're treating this game as like more of a fast food kind of game rather than sort of Wanting to to in, in, engage so in why have a pro it, rank and world masters? Uh, well, I mean, I think you're right. Like everything they've done with the game is like wacky, inflatable fun cards. Recently, they've just made yeah. everything more wacky and everything more polarized and everything more because they want everyone to have a chance to win. And if you win, regardless, because you have a good matchup, then everyone can be a winner. Some of the times. It's the Hearthstone. It's it's the it's the loot box mentality. It's the look. You got an achievement. You logged in. Wow, good job. You walked into your first house. You got an achievement. Good job. I fucking hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I so hate that. I want I want to feel like I only want to get an achievement when I feel like I did something, because it devalues yeah. everything else. Yeah, definitely. I mean, right now there's not much to achieve. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah, other than the like, grinding to get the top rank or whatever. Yeah. Um, chat. Sorry, I when I say draft, I mean it in like the MOBA context where both teams get to pack like ban champions and pick champions. And they, they take turns. Like I think of, I think of the pick and ban phase of. Uh, I, I think a card game where. If you're going to have things that, that have counter systems 
and the balance is going to be, well, this is good, but it loses to that. If you're going to have X is good against Y, but loses to, to Z as a part of your game, if you're not going to give every deck a 50% theoretical win chance against every other deck, then you need to have pick and ban. You can't, like, yeah. I can't take you seriously if, if you don't think that. Um, because then, like, it's like having rock, paper, scissors, but one person cues with rock and you cue with scissors. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's like, every, every turn, all you get to do is play rock. Go rock, paper, scissors. I go rock, you go paper. And then we go rock, paper, scissors. Same thing. Rock, like, <laughs> sideboarding. So, so sideboarding uh, is when, like, in other card games, they have other cards that are in your reserve pile you can pull into your deck on a on-demand basis. Is that... I've never played any, any other card uh, CCGs. Have you used Puzzle? Uh, no, not really. I don't play a lot of other things. Cause, so, Val, how does that work? And while he's explaining that, I meant to ask you. Um, earlier, Val asked, you know, don't, don't how are the Pirates matchups... Uh, Pirates and Frost, how do they do against Melee Tele? Do they can they beat Melee Tele? Pirate and Frost. Uh, I didn't play Melee Tele, that's the problem. Uh, oh, you don't play it yourself? You play the Shoop deck, Renar, or what? No, I play, I play Reaver. Uh, okay. <laughs> does, does Reaver beat Melee Tele? Uh, yeah, but uh, not the normal version. Gotcha. It's the one with Temple and well, actually, you don't have to tell me. Um, <laughs> it has to be, it has to, it has to have quacks basically. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, anything with quacks, we but Frost can't run quacks, is why I asked, and neither can pirates, right? Because it's called the necker. So how did they yeah. deal with military? And you don't have to tell me how you deal with yeah. it, but just what's the standard way? There's no standard really. It really depends on the deck. If you have a lot of you, 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 playing against Melitelli is just solitary, and if you have control, you try to control the the, the key cards. But then, like Isra, uh, Snowdrop, and yeah. Rat of it, I guess. Yeah, and and if you can win round one, then don't try to win round one, really. Either pass or win round one. Like either pass early or. Yeah, exactly. Either pass early because when 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 you pass early, there's some some merit to that mm. because um they really don't have cards to play if they have spend snow drop. So so one of the most common opening play I feel like from the. And our military player is these four cards, which is Istris, um, Radovic, mm -hmm. uh, Snowdrop, and then the engine, Siege Engine that pull out the Siege the, Masters. Because the master. they don't want to draw those with their Istris. Yeah. And, and oh, then they okay. want to start. I haven't and even thought about that. Start. So I, I've always like. Wondering how how long I should wait before I like yoink a, a Istrid or kill it or something, like how 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 long I can wait. So, if their siege yeah, masters well, aren't out, they probably don't want to click the Istrid unless they're somehow in their hand or something. Yeah, well, if, if you want to contest, you definitely have to to have plenty of things to deal with their stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so you just look at around one hand. You're like, can I answer all three of these, all four of these? If not, yeah. then you pass immediately. Or that's otherwise, possible. yeah. If if you if you are a good engine deck, you probably want to pass early, and then because after they've spent all of those things, they have no opening play really, unless they spend the Pequot. the cow, yeah. the co cow guy. Yeah, but then that's like a lot of their points gone. Yeah, if they spend cow guy, it just means that they have a sh much worse short round. And and you are free to spend your resources. And if they don't spend cow guy, then they're just opening with like, I don't know, just shuffle once with a mentor. And then it's just like very bad. <laughs> just four four point out, so it's even worse than before. 
and shuffling one is never a good thing, really. Uh, because that deck, as good as Melitoli is, that one priestess is very important. Yeah. It's strong as fuck. Like that card. Yeah, even if you get Melitoli out, I, I've lost a lot of games where I got their Meli out, but then I still lost to the yeah. priestess because they have 21 charges. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That priest, priestess in that deck is like, a lot of the time, just like 20 points more. So it's like ri ridiculous, really. That's super helpful, actually. Okay. Um, so before we go further, puzzle. Um, how much time do you have? Just so cause there's some things I want to ask you, but I. Mm -hmm. No, I'm okay with with just because this is Saturday night, so I have some time. Okay, so you're good for like maybe 30 more minutes at least, or. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So um, there's a few things I want to get uh, get your thoughts on uh, while we have you. Uh -huh. One is I want to get uh -huh. sort of like a. A meta landscape, right? And again, I, I, yeah. um, it's early in the season. You're a competitor. We don't expect anything that would give your opponents a competitive advantage. This is more for like us, Pepegas, yeah. yeah. getting an idea of. Uh, I, I know you know all this. I'm just saying it for chat, partly, so they know why why we're going to avoid some tough subjects. Um, okay. Like, what are the most common things you run into on the ladder? And then, like the common yeah. decks, and then what are their good and bad matchups? Because I, I get meta reports and stuff, but for me, the matchup table is like where I struggle the most. I just don't have like yeah. the practice partners or the, you know, the, the the knowledge to know what's good against what. So yeah, and even even when we play a lot of games, a lot of the time we just put in like a half track number number. Mm -hmm. Like this matchup is like sixty five percent or matchup is 40 percent even when we jam a lot like i i noticed that when we, we prep for master in Bali last year it's like even though we play a lot there's still quite some variance in that that you can't really say that this will beat that you know it's, it's not that clear cut yeah it depends yeah. it depends on the coin it depends on the draws yeah, and also different people know different lines, and some lines work, and some lines don't, right? Yeah, definitely. So depending on your practice partner versus your opponent, you may you may think a deck's good, but it turns out that no, Sergo knows that if you pass at seven against blah blah blah, you, you actually win because he's crazy like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what are some? So I have, um, I don't know if you can see this this stream, um. Actually, let me switch my sharing to screen share so you can see everything I'm doing. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I'm trying to 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 sort of write, um, like like make a, a bit of a yeah, just write some of this down so that I don't forget it. So yeah, you talked about gold neckers, pirates, and frost. So th they must be common enough to affect your decision making. What are some other common yeah, common they, decks you see? Well, they're the one that if you want to have a chance against everyone they are the one you would go for mm -hmm. they're, they're the most like all around solid decks right yeah all around sort of deck exactly okay i'm just going to add some so, so in a way they are i don't hate that type of deck normally mm -hmm. but what i hate is that they depend too much on. They have some weird consistency, where Frost can really tutor the Foglet. So if you don't draw it, yeah, 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 that's that's my biggest, biggest, uh, like, oh my god, because because Foglet's not a wild hunt card. Everything else can be, you know, you can play around. Yeah, but if you don't get your Foglets, well then, yeah, you lose a lot. And then also, I don't like. How a pirate is just like you need to draw your discard. Yes. So, well, you don't really need to nowadays. Why? But or... it would be very nice because they 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 have so many points that if you don't find your like, there's not a lot of smart deck around from what I see. Decks that can beat from them round one. You mean like is that a yeah, everyone thing? is playing pretty chill round one uh, recently. 
for some reason. Aside from Frost, there's like a Nilfgaard, which is always chill in round one most of the time. There's not a lot of rent free, so just enslave. And then some variant of cultist, which is also very non aggressive. So Nilfgaard is very non aggressive round one. Okay, so I'm playing NG wrong. <laughs> uh, Nilfgaard is enslave, right? Or... Well, not no, not really. It's just that the deck that I see mostly on ladder doesn't smore. Not about because if you play shoot NG, for example, then you smore. Okay, but I don't see that on ladder. That's the thing. So shoot shoot NG should smore. I always thought shoot NG should. Pass. Okay, interesting. No. No, I, I, I don't know if she should smart but or they not. Do. It, it depends on your version, really. Gotcha. But, um, so what version do you see the most on the ladder? Then? I don't see anything. Uh, only me playing Shoop, really. No, no, sorry. I meant NG in general. What, what NG do you see the most on ladder? Uh, just enslaved. Just boring, normal enslaved. Yeah. What about oh, yeah. Golden Necker yes, NG? Like, um, I've been messing around with you know, imprisonment or Toussaint, Golden Necker with Trey Hunt, Golden Grenade, Kanta, like just a lot of like tempo and fuckery because you have Yenvo, value yeah. cards, unicorns. Yeah, it looks like it can be all right. But yeah. you're not running into I mean, a lot of that. I saw Ugudai playing something like this late I, last season and I like made a version of it and he was running Swears. I, I have no idea why. And I didn't see all of his <laughs> cards, um, but I I kind of made a variant of it. I actually have have never run into any Naker Nilf card. So it's either Ren Free or in state. And Ren Free is like the Paya version. Gotcha. Yeah, I should With... probably put that in the list too. Ren Free yeah. NG typical all of it, whatever. Um. I am curious to talk about that deck as well, but um, this is yeah. a, just while I'm in the deck builder. This is a deck I got from Energix. This is another Golden Necker NG deck. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's from Energix, but it runs you know mops and filter and uh, uh -huh. boosty boys, Black Blood, Vivian. What does this do against um, pirates? It loses. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was thinking that like. <laughs> It, That's the problem. Like it, it can reach frost though, maybe. Yeah, yeah, frost. Maybe. You, you, you can definitely fuck with frost because you can like steal their shit, right? Um, you have yeah. you have three tall punish, and then you have unicorns yeah. to do six damage, and you have black. Sorry, yeah. you have four tall punish, so you can you can easily deal with frost. Um, yeah. All or even better, you can just yoink their foglet, and they can do nothing about it because you have filter. <laughs> right. The, this game, this deck shits on frost. Pirates is a little harder because yeah. they don't have any good yoink targets. Knights is like yeah. hilarious. It's like the easiest matchup in the world. But you, you can choose your own yeah. adventure with against knights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Harmony yeah, is also good. But they can smork Most you and 2 you if you don't draw well. Yeah. Most of the NR I see on ladder is shoot now. Shoot mutagen? Yeah, shoot mutagen. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, and Sultan was talking about uh, when we talk about military bounty. Has one? Well, yeah, definitely. Because bounty just uh, bounty can actually contest. Well, it depends on the draw. But if you draw something like Caleb, then you just win round one. And uh, if you don't, then you can easily go to round two and then steal their stuff. Caleb or Witchfinder, right? Because they have no military has no removal whatsoever. It has a lot of yeah. decks that just auto win against or should auto win against it if played correctly, right? Yeah, and also things like Freak Show really hurts military a lot. So, what about Freak Show? Sorry, either Freak Show, uh, Freak Show plus Drill. Mm -hmm. It's just because uh, I know Larry will play Drill. I also play Drill. I got this and, devotion list from Cintrian. Um, yeah. He, this is very close to what he took to the tournament last month, and he was like, this is the best. 
but he doesn't run drill yeah. or Caleb. Uh, his Fabian was actually a uh, Kurt, but then the deck got an extra provision, and I was like, uh, Fabian got buffed, I guess. So I put him in, but I, I you know, um, yeah, yeah, totally. Milling the priestess is like too much, yeah. So for other matchups, like you ought to lose to Frost, probably, right? Um, yeah, and what was the other deck you said you ought to you, you, you just are helpless against? I don't know. I, I don't play Devo, Devo a lot. I play Necker. So. Oh, yeah, okay. What does that lose to? Well, it can lose to Pirates. Oh, right. Because they just, yeah. Bounty is in this weird place where it's like a control deck, quote unquote, but it loses to control decks. <laughs> because they just lock all your spenders and, and bounty givers. And then yeah, you... it's control, but in a way, it's, it's like it needs to. Every control deck have some sort of engine, I feel like, and except pirates, it comes down. It 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 comes down to whose engine is better. For pirates against uh, this, like pirates ha have like the boats, and also even the way that they gain armor for each pirate. It's it's kind of like an engine against decks like Bounty. Yeah, I mean, you could say Terra is like Brute or Pale, right? Yeah, and no, even even just a, a random armor. On oh, the because all the armor head. gets value because the the only way Bounty gets, po I mean, generally the the, yeah. the main way Bounty gets points is by doing damage. But if you have armor, that's zero damage they're doing. They have to get through the armor, so that yeah. counters. So, yeah, it's just, I guess Pirates has a similar. Thing against frost except frost goes very tall and it's hard to get their units damaged right yeah and also you never get row control against pirates with this deck right almost never really so so you're in a situation where you have to play proactively but you don't have a lot of good things to play proactively you can keep a bear knocker brawler in hand but it sucks to play it round three, really. Yeah. Oh, oh. So round three, pirates will just go like uh, uninteractive. Well, it, 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 well, no, no, you can't really. But it depends because sometimes, yeah, like Bowstria Baus, say, sometimes the pirate player is too like eager to. Tempo pass and then they lose because they lose the route control. But if the pirates just go like just just have last say, then that's like the eighteen points from from, from fucking bounty because of the CLC. Right. One, yeah. one of the way yeah. So you you need you round know, control one? against pirates. For two things, one is in round three, you have to go first if you if you didn't win round one, and then they yeah. can also coc. So that's like that's two turns of yours that are invalidated almost. Yeah. You, okay. Now that makes sense. Yeah. So the first turn and the last turn, like, so you kind of have to switch around a bit because the funny thing with Necker deck is sometimes they have coc in deck. You never know. Mm -hmm. And if you have, yeah, yeah, you don't uh, know. That's I hate that so much. <laughs> oh. If you have a fairly big Ignatius already, like a ten power, you should just slam it. Oh yeah, because it can heal up too. Uh, so it, it's it's like yeah. a eighteen power greatsword. Yeah, it's not only that it can heal, but also because you want to buff your engine with your candle, so you don't. For example, you want if you if you play something like a Caleb, uh -huh. and you really want to buff it. Oh, you want it to live. You don't want it to be the COC target, right? Yeah, exactly. You prefer that exactly. he COC your hail because honestly, yeah. you assume he's gonna kill it anyway, so you might as well get engine value, right? Yeah. So you have if if you're lucky enough to have a big enough hail, 
and good engines on on hand, maybe that's one way to to make it difficult for pirates. But it's also still very hard because you have to strike the balance between like how much you buff and how much damage you have left to actually kill their stuff. This is deck the coin management is a little bit like it's it's a bit hard. Yeah. How do you feel about Professor in the card? Oh um so I feel like it, it although it may seem like it's auto include, but this deck uh I'm not I'm not sold on it, but I was playing this because that's yeah, so I, I, I know Lario doesn't play Professor. He play Caleb and don't know what to replace for. I know he played both both Cows Dying and Kurt. Ah, okay. For the cross matchup, I would say. Why? So he, I think he cut the Nuff. Uh, yeah. And I know he played two confession extractor. Yeah, and one scapegoat. Because th that's what yeah. that's what Shin was playing, and Shin gets a lot of his list from Lyria. Ah, I see. I've noticed. I've noticed there's an odd similarity between Shin list and Lyria list. Or people will be like, hey, have you played uh, seen Shin's blah blah blah? And I'll be like, that's not Shin's deck. That's <laughs> you know, that's so and such and such Chinese players deck. But then I find out that Lirio tweeted it. And so that's why Shin was playing it, because Lir yeah. yeah, yeah. So everything come from China. What's that? Everything come from China. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot more creativity going on uh, during the hours that I run to Asian players, and I find yeah. the matches are harder. It's like I'm at twenty three yeah. seventy five, and the guy's like killing everything I do, and not never letting me have round one, and like just I'm like what what is going on? Euro yeah. players are so chill in comparison. I feel like, uh, so like yeah, definitely. When it comes to deck building, it's like Asian is wild. <laughs> they just they just violate all the rules. All these like rules about don't play this round one. Like they were the first ones I saw <laughs> just jamming Siggy round one, and it's like no, that's actually <laughs> good. Uh, round control is important. It turns out, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's hard to tell when it's just a Pepega. Or when it's like, oh, that's the right way. Because they look the same in round yeah. one. <laughs> and so sometimes I get sloppy and end up, I'm like, I guess that was the right play. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know a lot about Devote. About the, yeah. but... How do you feel about... So like Death Wish isn't good, right? Um like I know yeah, for a while Kelly should... Dagon was a thing last season, but that's because happened to be good against certain decks. Yeah, this can abuse coin, I guess. What's that? Oh, this this one, this one. Hmm. I don't know about this one. This one feels weird. If you win round one, then then you can have a long round or something. But then. I found it's, it all comes down like... to your defender getting yoinked or heat waved or whatever. Um, like if 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 Nilfgaard can play an assassination on this and yoink it, so I've just started giving it veil yeah. when I play it. Devotion so decks... this deck against Frost, Kaltulis get moved, Defender get moved, um, the 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 Dagon just get killed mm -hmm. right away. Yep. If you kill Dagon, it's over. Yeah, so because this is they gone abuse deck, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so probably lose to Frost, I would say. Yeah. Um, um go ahead. Against pirates, it may, it, yeah, it, it'd probably do well against like a normal pirate without, without ways to answer Kelly. It's so neat, like seeing just... the way you, you think of you, you, you're going down your checklist of like, can it be pirates, can it be Frost? Because those are the, I see them very often, right? Yeah. Well, that's just like a prediction. I make a lot of wrong predictions. So. <laughs> yeah. No, but you were right about like Reavers defining that meta or SK Raid. Like, um, but it, it it's it's less about whether you're right or wrong and more about because I I think yeah. the part that's I'm I am guessing is interesting for a lot of people because they're never gonna like 
play like you or build decks like you, but the approach is something that people can copy because it's like, well, think about your yeah. deck. Like instead of just looking at cards and saying this is a good card, think about what am I seeing on the ladder? How, yeah. What's my plan from blue coin, from red coin against this deck, this deck, and this yeah. deck? Right? Do I have one? Do I lose? Okay, then maybe this isn't a good deck to play right now. Because I used to just mm -hmm. want a good deck and just learn that. Like if I get really good at this deck, and if I make the deck really good, and if I put in the right text, I should be able to do really well. And it's, that's not it. Like that can get you to pro, but like if you want to climb, that that's not a good strategy, I think. Yeah, just have to be aware of meta a lot of the time. Uh, what is this deck? Uh, this is a Tresky deck that I got like late last season. Um, oh, right. Yeah. It's Commandos with Quacks and Rafards and Temple. <laughs> yeah. Dwims and uses Scouts uh, and Casting Contest. To... I'm not very so on the Rafard, but I guess you need to sim, so... <laughs> Um, the fight without the winch is like so meh. Yeah, I I mean I tend, but it makes it more likely for a Foltus to survive. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I I so I think it a little bit of it is is that it's bait. The other thing is that like, yeah. you play so many soldiers that if they don't kill it, right? Because yeah, you do. This is a lot of overloading. Yeah, and, and you just play, like, you use it twice in the round one. Um, yeah. But every single one of these cards that you play, sometimes you play multiple in one turn. It gets two or four damage a turn, which is yeah. a lot of tempo, right? The thing yeah. that I found awkward about it is that I it made me want to play Rafards in Melee Row because one of the soldiers I would play is a Blue Stripe Commando. Mm -hmm. And I want to quax out my Foltest. Right. And then click the commando so that it goes yeah. to the right of Foltest. <laughs> but then these guys, uh, the, the scouts also have to go melee row. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I end up having to use my C ladder round one to just like have board space. And <laughs> yeah. it, it got a little awkward. Like that's what, that, that's the part that I didn't like. So I just put their parts on range row. But it, I don't know. It, but then, but then, if Rafard's on Range Row, like you, you can't put Blue Stripe Scouts next to it, you know. So it's, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. Plus, you have Garrison and right. Temple taking up slots often, <laughs> but uh, it did yeah. have points. <laughs> Definitely got the points. It's a Trusky deck, right? <laughs> Garrison makes sense because you get because so many can... of them, and then two Dwims like is a lot of points. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's also a, a extra commando. So yes, exactly. So not only you have these two, and Temple can give you Roche. Um, yeah, Kazakh's told me what like the best the best stuff he said was like Roche. You can get a Boholt. Oh, the other reason Rafard <laughs> is in the deck is that Rafard's an epic. It's a it's a so except for Foltest, there's no legendaries in this deck, and and yeah. maybe Donamir. Yeah, Foltest and Donamir. So yeah. you can get all the other ones. Uh huh. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um. What to get your thoughts on the real meta breaker of the season? <laughs> <laughs> Why, Why are dwarves bad? <laughs> they have Why armor. Are Shouldn't they be good against frost yeah. and pirates? Well, they have armor, but the payoff is also to do with armor. Yeah. That's right. That's what <laughs> happened to me. I, I kept building armor. They kept taking it. I wasn't losing points, but I also wasn't gaining points because I need the armor. Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, why I ended up switching to this, like, trying Philavandral with Zoltan's company. And I yeah. even tried Dwims, but it, it just failed. And maybe I was playing it badly. But because mm. you, you, you get 10 Rowdy Dwarfs, max. Well, 10 plus 4, 14. And you have yeah. Monroe, who converts your Rowdy Dwarfs to Berserkers. Yeah. So, like, even if you have 10, each Duem was playing for 14 points. And I felt like that wasn't enough to build an entire deck around and put a Philavandral in. 
But... Yeah, when I look at this deck, I feel like, does it have enough consistency? No, I cut the consistency because I didn't have enough points. <laughs> so I ended up putting putting Bob Isengrim in there. Um, but you could, you could, because uh, Isengrim was for Philavandro, but you could just easily run Onero um, and Decree or something. Or not even you could you could run uh, Novigrad Injustice. You could run Call of the Forest. Sorry. Um, I mean, I like the idea of Philavandrum. It's just uh, takes a lot of provisions. I feel you do need Philavandro to be honest. Like you really need to be greedy with Monroe and all that. And you need, right now you the need meta Eisenberg's doesn't counsel. have a lot of ways to deal with both Monroe and. Um, what's what's Zoltan? What's uh, or Bruver? No, Bruver. Yeah. yeah, because everybody you wants have... to deal with Istrid and Radovid. So but these are the, these are also sixes, right? Uh, yeah, but they're a bit more buffy. They have armor. Like for, pir for pir pirates, they have COC to deal with Bruver, and then they can't really kill the other one. So. Since Isengrim is so important for Philavandral, we have no other way to buff her, right? Um, would you play Fav? Or would you play Oniromancy? I would still play Oniru, I think. This yeah. deck kind of need Oniru. Uh, is Zoltan Chive very good? No, I, I hate all... like Except for Zoltan Warrior, I hate all the Zoltans. But you have to have them in the deck. Otherwise, Zoltan's company only gives you three. Uh, if you cut Zoltan Chive, you get four, right? Yeah. Is four enough? Mm. The other thing is Zoltan Chive has a lot of armor. Although although his armor goes yeah. away when you go to the next round. So it's kind of dumb. And if you're... So because your payoff... Maybe you cut the payoff, the armor payoff like Dennis. Yeah, the arm prep is Dennis uh, and Marauder. Yeah. You could run the second one, but I wanted to run Volunteers. Which with Garrison, you can also use Garrison too. Then yeah, so I've may maybe just one Marauder and not Dennis, or just Dennis, and maybe less of that. Then if you don't draw this, you're so... Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, we still have a 5 and a 4 that we need to add. Would you run Maxi? No. Uh -huh. You you can't afford it, right? No, can't afford it, yeah. Are there skirmishers? Uh, uh, or agitator cut? I don't know. Is there any card that is good? <laughs> is there any <laughs> card that is good? You sound like you're building a monster. Well, one, 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 one way you can do is you can, for a 5p slot, you can have the What's it called? The thing that buff your unit by two in the deck? The offering? Oh, yeah. That's something Val was can... suggesting, was just running All God, too, as a way to buff Philavandral. Yeah. I mean, uh, offering is quite useless against Frost, <laughs> but it's good against Pirate, I guess. On the boat? Yeah. Yeah. So you just got the Marauder? Yeah, we just cut the Marauder. And then... See how his eye always goes towards the five piece? That's like... <laughs> that's that's where your provisions come from, is your fives and sixes. And... Yeah, so I feel like right now you should be fine with provision, right? Like Zoltan... What are the cards you're going to play? You're going to play Zoltan, Monroe, Pilavandro, three. Garrison is four. Uber is five. Ising Grim first clown to six. Yeah, you're gonna you need people like uh, this. You're gonna have to play a lot of trash cards. But these trash cards do play for a decent amount of points. Because uh, we have Wackenbergs. I can't believe you haven't yeah. commented on the double Wackenberg yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, because Trusky also played and he was playing Wackenberg, so I'm like, okay. D chat! Yeah. See? I, I mean, I'm vindicated. I, I, don't, I don't hate Wagenberg. It's, in this meta, it's like, it's cute. That's going to be my next 
title. I don't hate Wagenbert, said Puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't like this. This was like chat made me play Dwarf, so I like ended up playing it. <laughs> no, it's good to to play it, to be honest. Uh, Hi, Cosmics. Man. Is volunteer like necessary? No, but it's thinning. It feels so bad. Even though it's thinning. Yeah, I know. It's and you just can play like... from Garrison, too. So you... Oh, no, though. Yeah, then you have to play it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Makes sense. <laughs> Makes so much sense. Yeah. Because Garrison comes down it's for 12 good. and it's a Garrison. Okay, yeah. And two yeah, then, then then you should definitely include it. <laughs> for sure. I mean, at one point I tried cutting it and immediately put them back in. I was like, no, I can't. I can't. Not like this. Yeah. Like, so... I also hate the fucking scoundrel. It's like... Oh. Scoundrel and people running coded weapons again. Yeah. I don't know why, but I've seen a lot of coded weapons this season. More than... Way more than last season, for some reason. It's annoying. And shoop decks run it, too, obviously, but... Yes. Okay. So this is something like Sam Sam always comments on. It. It's like, how do you have Oniro and like no tome? Because that's all something that I always do is like I hate missing Oniro. But yeah. Um. I... Nowadays you just have to go with the flow because you. Literally... <laughs> you just gotta go like... with the flow. <laughs> yeah, you draw it or you don't. Yeah. Because like. All of this frost deck and pirates are hyper consistent, even though their consistency are weird, but they're much more consistent than Onero list, I would say. Um, and so we, because they, their consistency are also points, you can afford to spend so much provision on like yeah. spread, spending provision on Onero is already like crippling your points a lot already. I see. That that makes sense. Um like for Frost, the only tutor that doesn't give point is like the Naga Far and, and that one is like a double tutor. Yeah. Once you've been um, enough, Nagafar like gets gets a lot more value and yeah, you you thin the you, with the Winter Queen. You thin one with Gales. Um, you yeah. thin with Wild Hunt Riders. And then you, yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. Frost is Frost is like they gain they gain point and then they damage so. It's the same idea as vampires, right? And yeah, or siege. But it's, it's just they have this busted Tyrannalia. Yeah, well. You take out Tyrannalia, yeah, and Frost will be balanced. <laughs> yeah, probably. Because now they can, they can overcommit by spending a ton of Frost in one round, and you can't yeah. punish them by passing and saying, "Ha ha, you wasted all your weather effects the way that you can against rain, for example, or whatever." Yeah. Because they're like, "Oh no, just kidding." Uh, all that shit I stacked on an empty board, I get, I get it back. And it's an order, it's a click on a location, so I can drop a fog, click this, and it's instantly 12 power. It's... Mm. Uh, mm. Kozak says he has 1 million pin uh, PLN uh, in his account, and that he's going to donate a quarter of it. That's all I'm seeing. I'm assuming that's a percent, not a dollar sign. So you might see me get a haircut. Yeah, uh, here, by the way, if, if you guys don't know, oops, uh, where's the work flurry? Yeah, they'll make Frost really good. Can't block them, can't do shit to them, really. Really annoying. I don't know how and why this changed, but. 
Oh, I used to, I remember I used to write on Reddit complaining about Vale after. <laughs> vale is so dumb. Vail, like, it... I was, I was, so the, the post that I made was that Vale is a little bit of a binary effect and mm-hmm. you kind of want, means. yeah, so I, so I kind of wanted to change into something like Shield where you can block the first instant of uh, of effects and then the next one is gone, right? Just It's just once. It's just like a shield, but for... What a coincidence. Status. That's what I've been advocating. I said at least for bleeds. It should, like, but honestly, I wouldn't mind if it was like... If it took three poisons to kill a Veiled unit, great. Or, or two blocks to lock a Veiled unit, fuck it, great. Why should something yeah. just be completely immune? Like, that's... Yeah. <laughs> like, what? A, a shield doesn't make you immune to damage. It makes it stop to hit you twice. But, like, shield is a lot weaker because you can hit it for one damage and then hit it for 12 damage, right? Whereas yeah. with lock, you got to use a whole-ass lock on a veil and then use a separate whole-ass lock. Like, there's not, like, a mini lock or a semi-lock. There's not, locks don't have durations, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Bleeds do, so I could use, like, a two-bleed and then a three... Like, whatever. There's no... Only, only Nilfgaard has a one-bleed. Uh, yeah. don't get such luxury of, you know, precision or... <laughs> Yeah, there Controls are a lot of things destiny. that like change that will never get changed. Just have to cope. <laughs> Just have to cope. I would cope a lot better if I didn't have uh, stuff in vampires that randomly targeted units like uh, Crimson Curse or or, yeah. or Unseen Elder. Like I hate it so much. I've lost so many games from one of those because things hitting a veiled unit, which wasn't yeah. as big a deal. Back before we had flutters in the way that they are, but when they changed flutters, they didn't stop to think about what are some other cards in this archetype? Huh. So you're saying that if the eye drop a flutter, which is now a four base power, and the blood moon doesn't hit the right target, if it hits something that's already bleeding or something that has veil, which it does almost every chance it can get if it screws you, uh, then then your flutters don't boost, then your flutter's dead, then your game is gone. Like it's so fucking dumb. But like, yeah. if you then leader, then what was the point of having Blood Moon on the other row for five turns if I can't rely on it to boost my flutters? Why can't the flutter have a deploy that says, you know, if there's Blood Moon on the opposing row, boost self by two or something. And that replaces the other. Or better yet, just have Blood Moon prioritize bleeding targets or always apply at least one bleed. If something's already bleeding, have it do one damage in one bleed. Like, I, I, I don't know. There's like 17 ways to yeah, fix that. that. None of which would be, be honest, overpowered. The best way would be just to have the like shield. To be honest, like what's that? It, it prevents future things to. It, it just like let you design more shield with status. I, I didn't. Sorry, I wasn't able to. I didn't catch that. So what, what? What I say is just like if Bell was like shield. Oh, Bell was like get... shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it would, would fix all of those problems. I wouldn't care yeah. if a veil you did got hit by Unseed Elder. Sure, I lost two bleeds, but he lost his veil, and then it won't happen again. I had game yeah. where I lost. I had like three flutters on the board and Unseen Elder. My opponent had like seven units on one row and eight on the other, and he had one veiled unit. <laughs> and guess what? An Elder hit. It hit the one veiled unit. I was convinced at a certain point that the RNG was fucked. I'm still convinced that mulligans are sticky, where the last card you mulligan always goes to the second top position of the deck. It just it just seem, seems to happen a lot more than random. Like I, maybe I'm just crazy and it's like gambler's fallacy or whatever. But like, yeah, uh, the fact that military was going to the top only makes me more suspicious that there's. How can you not make a goddamn shuffle algorithm? Where did you learn to yeah. program like sorting like? Sorting and shuffling is like the first thing you learn. I learned about bubble sort in the fifth grade. I don't know how these people fuck up random. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> uh Egrin is trash, right? There's there's Egrin? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say it's trash, but it's... it doesn't serve anything. Doesn't help anything. Yeah, it's just a fifteen point unit, and then what? <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, you played a hail. 
that cost more and dies <laughs> if it takes like six damage. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And can be like it's gives them a graveyard hate target if you didn't already have one. <laughs> well, if if we have monster just like all get buffed, then eager will be good again. But oh, right now the ice type is in the side. Don't worry, puzzle. I have I have just the right point slam monster deck for you. Take a look at this bad boy. <laughs> I don't think I'm not sure about this is Teshum. Everything else is hyper optimized and basically perfect. Is, is Eater really good? Oh yeah, Eater is the best card in the game. Oh, really? Yeah, just ask Gavain. Uh, exclamation Eater in my chat. One time he came to my chat. He's like, "What does the worm do again?" <laughs> the one that got roasted because they got roasted. Because people like fucking beeline for it, man. This thing gets more heat waves than any other card in the monster faction. I don't know why or how, but people just kill it. <laughs> <laughs> they just see it they're like, oh, this must be some sort of crazy cheese. Better, better put a kibosh to that. <laughs> no, so Itter gives creates a drone every time you consume something. Yeah. So if you have a slither, that's an extra one point a turn. But more importantly, um, it, it so provides you drones for your Glusty <laughs> or or for your, you know, and then and then Itter himself, when you click on it, it consumes all tokens on the road, which includes the uh -huh. stuff from Crimson Curse. And that consume, uh -huh. so you can, if your Itter is alive at Adrenaline 3, you drop a Sheetroll, you click Itter, Sheetroll goes to like 20 points instantly. Mm, I see. So if you have like a Were Rat on the board, right, you can put an Itter behind yeah. it and that's an infinite point generating machine. Then, I see. Um, but most m most of the time, I put I put Were Rat. If I have Ruin, I have to play Itter uh, Were Rat on melee. But most of the time, I put Were Rat on range row, and on melee row, I have Itter. And so, uh -huh. you know, I I, I drop Sheetroll, and then I click, I click the Itter, and then like my last play is usually click Were Rat and play Glusty. <laughs> and so she Sheetroll gets two for each thing you consumed. Ramwari gets. Uh, one for each, and I have a mega scope. Let's see. So it can play for a gajillion points, but you know they just get removed, locked, and deleted. <laughs> but I was the problem I had with this deck before was that it didn't have a good short round, so I had to win round one, which sometimes required playing my win cons, which defeated the whole purpose. Now, at least on Red Coin, I have Egern as a reach card. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a really nice reach for sure. Yeah, because then they can't kill it, and then and then you can open the next round with Osral, so it doesn't get graveyard yard hated, and then pass. Like most decks can't answer uh, a sixteen point Osral and get tempo. Like, well, unless they have like Geralt or Grave of Force. Well, I would say what would make Egan really good is to make it to night illusion, and then you can play it in Nicker. That would make it really good. <laughs> make it do what? Get to nine provision, then it will be really good. Yes, I was saying that. Nine provision eager it would still be smaller than a hail, but it would be like it would be playable. Because look at this deck. This deck wants to be Golden Necker. Like yeah. I'd get thinning from Golden Necker instead of Portal. And I, I yeah. can live without Crimson Curse, it's just a filler organic card. Yeah. But if, if someone were to force you to play this deck, is there anything you would change about it? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, I want to make good use of your time while we have you here. So, and Lacerate for the Manitelli, right? Um, yeah, I have like yes, yes, Lacerate, but also Lacerate can set up Glusties, and when you kill stuff, your uh, She Troll and Ram Warriors go up. Yeah, I'm just wondering if Goliath is good. Pugo or Goliath? Oh, for Manitelli, I see. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, it is because I have Cyclops. Yeah. And also, you have an alternative for Osdro, I guess. Sure. I mean, I would, if I wanted Osdro, oh, I'd yeah, run Pugo, because yeah. Pugo's one more point, or two more points, yeah. to be counted. And also, I have drones, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's only one. What else can, can Goliath pull? Um, tall units. So, Sove. Um... Aridin in Wild Hunt? Uh, not really a good pull. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's their, like, oh, past or something. Uh, Currently, I guess. 
Yeah, that's true. It can pull Caranthir. Um, but only if it's already tall. It can pull Regis, yeah. obviously, but only if it's tall. But pulling Regis is good because yeah. it's still six less points for him. Um, yeah. Against ST, he can pull Al. Like, usually you don't want to pull whatever this pulls, is the problem with Goliath. Because it's not the highest provision, it's the tallest. Yeah. Fuck this mm. card. <laughs> but it might be funny, so we'll keep it. Yeah, it's just funny, really. It's not good. <laughs> not about being good. I know Portal's Gigabad, but these cards are like incredibly slow to play one at a time. Yeah. So I tried to make, I tried a version of this with Dagon to give uh -huh. Deathwish to these and then use Brewis to pull them out. But that ended up with Ooh. too many situations where, because I had to have access <laughs> to Dagon in round one. And if I won round one, then Dagon doesn't work as a, you know, because he goes to the other form. And I couldn't protect him because I wasn't running Defender. Because the whole point of this deck is value. and Yeah. This is one idea with mm -hmm. Itter. The other idea with Itter is if you have, um, what's his name? Uh, Rat King. Where Rat, Ruin, and Itter on the board. Where Rat consumes the Ruin. That consume creates a drone. Where uh, Ruin comes out and eats the new drone. So it's like an infinite four point a turn machine. Uh, and then uh -huh. if you add like this, it would become six points a turn, seven point, eight point a turn. That's it. Yeah. To be fair, like greedy deck is probably a good way to explore things right now. Is there a lot of control in Pirates and Frost, but also the way they control is very slow? So if, if, if you can get tall fast, they can't touch you. Yeah. Well, if, against Pirate would be hard, but against Frost, yeah. you have a lot of time. Like, yeah, yeah. For Frost, I can... So, like, people ask me, like, with, with my, like, Wisher Mentors deck, like, how do you deal with Frost? I'm like, well, it depends on the coin. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you want red coin. I'm like, no, 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 I want blue coin. I want blue coin against Frost. Because once I get set up, their damage cannot outdo my healing. And then I win. Yeah. So this is my current version of that. Um... But I'm trying, I'm trying to be as greedy as possible while still like having some self-respect. <laughs> uh, so I'm still running Hatori because sometimes people open with a card that I have to answer, like uh, um, Scorpion. What's that? Yeah, a Scorpion. They give, they give Crystal Skull to, or uh, like a, a, a Executioner, or like round three they when they play Tier, and I've tried Teshem. And Teshem, first of all, I can tutor, I can tutor uh Ibar two ways, right? I can tutor mm -hmm. him with, with Call of the Forest or with Isaac Grimm's Council. I could also have mm -hmm. him in hand. I could also have Serpent Trap in hand. Like that's five different mm -hmm. ways for me to answer a card like that. Uh, whereas, you know, Teshem, I, it has to be in my hand, or I have to be able to tome you, and tome is risky. play a bit too many tutor. What's that? Do you think this deck played too many tutors? I mean, obviously, yes, yes. But whenever I played the the like the Lyrio version or the Kerpatent version, like if you don't get sentries round one, yeah, I feel like you lose. Uh, or frogs, like you need sentries or frogs, and I need to thin I enough see. to get Golden Necker, like if. I don't know. I can't stand it when I don't draw, because this, this is kind of combo deck, right? Because you need you need the saber tooth tiger with or else the mentors are kind of not good. Um, nah. Yeah. When I I tried like the last day of the season, and what I find is I actually doesn't win round one quite often. I doesn't win round one a lot. I get pushed a lot. Oh really? Yeah. And I still win, but my I, I have like the opposite experience. I always win round one, but sometimes I don't have yeah. enough in round like the right cards to be able to two them in round two. And then uh, I if I go along round three, they have first say, and I, they can just kill my stuff as I play them. 
a lot of times. Unless it's like a devotion yeah. deck and they've already used their tall punish. Like if it's against Nilfgaard and they use their Vilgefortz round one, then I can play Defender. Um, and he'll kill the Defender with Stefan, but I can buy enough time for my mentors to go out of his reach. Yeah. Yeah, against Nilfgaard, you definitely have to play. Yeah, see? Pirate. Yep. So I, I usually don't play Milva. I recently added it just to see, like, if that was what I... I'm trying to make it, like, greedier, right? <laughs> or more... Yeah, but Milva version works better with the older Mega Scope, I guess. But probably doesn't change a lot. True. I also used to run Red Sword, which was very helpful against both. But I I took your yeah. I think one time you were like, what about just running a rebuke and some? I was trying rebuke. Rebuke was helpful. Um one problem I had with Red Sword was like if I red sorted a, a cultist, I had to like against against cultists, I had to then like mulligan it because playing it was a liability. Yeah. I see. The gods speak to him. Where is the fucking crushing trap? Oh no. Right, we can get it. Alright, we have. have yeah. The, the, the... Oh! That's why, like. They're on... So. So. And these you boost your engines with... too. Like, they're not just tutors, they also protect your engines. Yeah. Like, getting it to. So. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just, just from the very first play, you seem to play very different from me already. Because you go very aggressive. Yes. If I get a foothold uh, in, I will beat him on even. And then I can push. Or I can, yeah. you know, I can go... Um, I can force him to play a lot round two, or I can 2-0 him, right? I see. I got his heat wave. So this is not a golden necker. Mm. But... Yeah. This will get Roach out, so... Yeah. Uh, I would say playing back row was better, right? It doesn't matter too much. Oh, because of this? Yeah. Uh, not just that, it's just more like you can... We want to stack the row a little bit slower because of the Corsair. Huh. <laughs> Aggressive. Because I, I learned that, like, and maybe I'm just bad at defending bleeds, but, like, the common thread with all my losses was, like, I lost round one. <laughs> so I was just... Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's definitely not, like, an idea situation where you have to defend it, please. Only thing I don't know right now is like, like if this was just my pure version, I would know whether like, but I don't know if I should play this Milva or not. Um. Uh, against pirate and with your deck, I feel like Milva is to play like the the round that you uh, that you have the location already and the uh, or the frog. Okay. Otherwise, like, these engines are gonna die. Yeah. Well, so the way that I play it is I, I go on interactive until... So I, I play Sabertooth Tiger and, like, traps and stuff. Um, yeah. And then when I have five cards, I play Golden Necker and I drop three things on the board. By then, especially if I had, like, played Ibar in round three, there'd be, like, three or four bodies yeah. already, including traps, and then the mentors come down as five, six, and then I click the... I click the saber tooth and they go to seven eight and now he has to like pull something special to kill them. So getting his leaders yeah. round one is really good. Getting his heat wave. Well, this is a scenario version, so it doesn't apply. But you see the scenario or crack. I mean, it's both usually, right? Isn't it? Uh, 
feel like they will try to play scenario from Compass. Maybe. Gotcha. Of but I don't know. I faced this this morning, actually, but I don't. Interesting. <laughs> uh, can you? I feel like the 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 serpent is so bad unless you you can snipe. Oh, you can snipe the boat. Yeah, I when guess. he when he opens, whatever he opens with, I serpent it. Okay. Plus, like you, if, if as you say, he has compass. Um, yeah. I mean, he's already played him. Wait, he played he played Mardrom in. Okay. Like instead of seagulls or something? He did play seagull. Okay. Oh. This is where I don't know what to do. Like, um, for defending a bleed. Like, because if I commit this, that's like a huge commitment. No, yeah, that's okay. I feel like you have to look at the tutor in your deck to see, uh, if you pull them with Naker, what will happen? I have a Dryad in deck for like right now. You, right now, you probably need one more unit. Yeah, definitely. Oh, right. Yeah, you can. Now, it's, I prefer to have Ibar for the situation because I can Ibar into Serpent and be ahead, but it's fine. Yeah. Like he's useful in the de in defending bleeds too because they open with something, especially against like pr control decks like this. Because a a lot of my time with this deck was spent during like this is like a fragile deck, right? And I was playing as a lot of control decks. Mm. So you do you not like Mega Scope or is this? No, I love not... Mega Scope. I. Uh... Which I just had an extra provision I wanted to try, but if I don't play it, because in round three it's oh, bad. Um, like because often yeah. my mega sculpt target ends up being a Witcher mentor and it creates a one and then it dies. So. I see. I'll play after nice. this game. I'll switch to my version and just show you how I normally play it. And then maybe you can give me your thoughts then, because I definitely have a blind yeah. slot. I've played this like a thousand games and I don't. This is just like what you're seeing here is a, an experimental version with frogs and yeah. Milva. And, and it, it well, I kind of have to sign off after this okay. game, but no worries. I, I can't watch this one. Oh, well, we don't know God. if he has CSC, right, Kha'Zix? He's What is he doing? Anna chat. With Sucrus? Yeah. If we see a Sucrus, I'm just going to play Golden Necker to get as much on the board as possible before. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, we. I don't have enough leader charges left to um, deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. The lead business would involve so much Fucking hell. Hooray! Anna chat. So everything else just dies. Yeah. That's okay. Oh what? <laughs> okay. Um uh, was that a bait? <laughs> We got Omega baited. I guess so. We trade Necker into Sucrus. Good trade. Well, no. No. <laughs> Come on, you don't play Sucrus not to play Arter Uh, What did we pass here? What the fuck does he do? Good question. 
I was about to like leader this and drop it. Yeah. I'm, I'm up 18 points. What can you do? You can still play, but I, I feel like you, oh, you right. can play the one. He can tear, I guess, but I, I, I don't know what he will do. Tier is but nine can... plus 10 is 19 points. Plus three is 22. Tier would be enough, but I mean, why the fuck would you play tier in this list? You don't even have good rounds. Nah, I'm passing. <laughs> He did, didn't realize that this this guy, when he f comes back, adds nine points. People don't understand this. Okay. Oh. No. So. Forgot about so. <laughs> oh, and here was going to be second form, so here would not have been enough. Yeah. <laughs> I can read it. Wow. Because you only needed one damage unit, and I had one damage unit. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Puzzle. I really appreciate it. Of course, if, if you were to like chill here, I'd totally let you stay for hours. Um, but you said you wanted to go, so. Totally. Yeah, I'll just hang around in the chat, maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit too sleepy to talk. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Everyone, say thank yeah. you to Puzzle. See ya.